today is the 19th uh, day of the month of May in this 2020 year of our Lord. We were blessed with a nice rain. The, the earth is clean and looks pristine. Looking upon my garden and uh, share a little bit of that view with you today. A little bit of blue that's coming into the sky. We're thankful for the gift of this day and hope it will afford you many a blessing. Today I'd like to talk about the nature of nature of God. One of the things that often plagued Martin Luther was the concept of uh, his concept of God as being a wrathful God, the God of the Old Testament. And absent from that for the longest of times was the God of grace. Together for Luther, they formed a perfect composite of the nature of who God is for us. Uh, I'd like to begin this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> a reading today from the 86th Psalm. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me. For I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for it to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seek my life. They have not set you before their eyes, but you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. And let us pray. God of mercy, when Christ called out to you in torment, you heard him. You gave him victory over death. Fill us with the love of your name and help us to proclaim you before the world that all people may celebrate your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of my favorite textbooks was this little book by by Lenart Penema, and it is entitled Faith Victorious, an Introduction to Luther's Theology. On the nature of God, Penema writes these thoughts related to his study of Luther. All the experience of human heart spoke to Luther of divine judgment, but in the Holy Word he found divine grace. For this reason, the objectivity of the word was to him a supreme importance. It was a necessity of life. The fact that in the word he found the God of grace 
explains the rhythm of Luther's life of faith, the rhythm of judgment and grace. Before God, Luther stood as a sinner and as a righteous man, simo justus et peccator. His religion had room for nothing besides this twofold understanding of God's work. God judges and God pardons. Judgment is his strange work and pardon is his proper work. Each man has a hell in his conscience, says Luther, and heaven he describes thusly. <clears throat> this is what it means to be blessed when God rules in us and we are his people. God's activity was the essential aspect of Luther's concept of God. Comparable was the decisive significance of his view of the glory of God as the chief motive of both faith and prayer. We glorify God when we take him at his word. In his activity, God protects his own honor. His activity is the best revelation of the fullness of his grace and power. For this reason, the believer must give constant attention to God's works. These works move along two main lines, the line of almighty power and the line of grace, which seeks us as sinners. Divine omnipotence colors everything that Luther says. To him, omnipotence includes the idea that it is God who works all in all. Were it not for God's almighty power, everything would collide or collapse into nothing. Even the will of man has its origin in the fact that God is active and effective everywhere and in everything. Creation can set no bounds for God's activity. It's apparent that God's activity is prevalent in most everything that we see and that we hear that surrounds us. You look at the beauty of the springtime and the renewal of life within the world. You see the goodness that comes out of the hearts of people in the midst of humanity that seems more prone to look after itself and to have disregard for the other. Sadly, that's becoming more and more apparent in this time when, when there's this conflict of interest of people who feel that they have the right to do pretty much anything they want as citizens of this country, regardless of what happens to their neighbor who might suffer because of their actions. So God's goodness would call us to look not solely to the well-being and protection of the self, to be judgmental of those who differ from us, but to look to the love that we can share one with another, our concern for the well-being of each other. That d dynamic of judgment and grace, the nature of God. Keep in mind, Luther spoke of it as the nature of God. Too often I feel that we spend a lot of time playing judge, more so than the one who offers mercy and help and guidance to the other. Let's leave the things that are to God to God. And sometimes that's letting God be God and to take charge of the ultimate things that will take place in this world. We pray God's blessings upon you this day. Let's give thanks for the blessings of life. Give God the glory for what God has offered to us, his merciful judgment when we err and fall by the wayside. And let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, we thank you for the sound of birds, the sound of water fountains, the sound of thunder and lightning that rumble across the skies, the sound of soft rain falling upon the earth, the sound of the voices of love and mercy and care 
of people one for another. We give you thanks for the gift of this day and our life within it. Might we be strengthened in our journey of faith to find our confident trust lies in having you as a significant part of each of our moments. Bless us as we each have need. We are mindful of those who have needs far greater than we, for those that suffer from this pandemic, from those that suffer the onslaught of drought, of famine, of malnutrition, for those that lack the love of others in their family setting, for those that seek a forgiving heart of others that hold things against them, for those that know the goodness of your love and mercy and try and live their best to be true and good reflections of that to the world. Guide us, O Lord, this day to be those that know of your mercy in our midst that enables us to have life and being anew each and every day. But in turn, let us be those who can be kind and caring and merciful one to another, even as they err in our sight. Strengthen us, O Lord, keep us mindful of those whom, for whom we intercede this day in the silence of this moment, whom we lift up to you in our thoughts and prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God. Amen.